What's up guys? Welcome today to the Steps to Success podcast. I've got a very special guest with me today, Chris Jackson, who is ex-nightclub owner, lover of seeing people win, believes in life by design to his own standards, not someone else's time clock, risk taker, big time connector, loves to travel, connect, and then execute with people with positive mindsets. Welcome, sir. Thank yes, you sir. for yes, joining sir. the podcast today. Um, Chris and myself, we have some relationship. We go back um, a, a ways now, some years, and we're going to kind of put a spin on the podcast on how we're doing things today. We've yeah, we come are. up with some relatable questions that we hope people are going to take some value from yeah. um, and just kind of go on life experiences and, and see where it, where it takes us really for today. Yeah. Yeah, um, and and just to just to clarify, this is something that Delroy and I talked about for a while now. Um, we I think we both respected each other's businesses. We do completely different things, and that's what's really fun about this um, is that you know we do an array of different things, but we both we love the hustle. We love that we're both executors. Um, we're not necessarily just idea men, and so it's it's a pleasure to be here, man. And thanks for having me on. Thank you. So you you guys may see Chris around here more as I'm doing this podcast, or even maybe following him on his one um, in the future. So we definitely are going to jump into some questions. Our first question for Chris, we're going to shoot this one to Chris first. Is what is your biggest strength, and what's your biggest weakness in life, in business, in relationships because um, i can do all this <laughs> let's let's start let's start with um business Perfect. we'll start with business first and then we'll see how it because normally sometimes business and personal intertwine so sure. and you're very much like that like it's a whole lifestyle you are who yeah. you are and your business yeah. is what you do so oh i love that that's a great question uh I definitely let's start with the let's start with the weakness first okay. all right let's get that <laughs> yeah. out of the way and then we'll go to the strength but i would say my biggest weakness in business is letting go of the reins, okay. right? You know, the old saying, like, if I don't do it, it's not going to get done or yep. it's not going to get done the way you want it to. So I think just like having that, um, it's like having that dream truck and you're building it with your dad, right? From the age of six or however old you are. And, you know, the neighbor wants to come over and help you work on it. And you're like, uh, this is this is what I've wanted, you know, and I've been working on this forever with my dad. And now I'm supposed to just let you you know, bang a hammer in there. Like it, it, that, that part's hard for me. So, um, I would say giving up those reins. Um, yeah. But then again, on, on the biggest strength side, I think is connecting for me. Um, my biggest strength is definitely connecting. I love seeing people win and I like, I like to see, um, I like to see what ideas can come from people. Yeah. Right. Like that is my favorite thing is going, okay, you're good at this and this, but maybe you're not good at this and this, but I'm good at this and this, right? So like, let's power combine. And Delroy is good at this and this, right? So if we can keep us three in this, then, then you know, we're going somewhere. So, I like it. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Is there any examples of, of, of actually when you said, like, what was the result of when you didn't let go or the big result on the other end when you did connect someone? Yeah, that's a, another great question. Um, I would just say examples of I'm in a business where we're basically like a volunteer army, right? So I'm, I'm not paying people. I'm not, it's a, it's a, it's a business where people really have to decide if they want it for themselves. Right. And so if you create leaders right all over, if you're now not trusting them to get their job done the right way, that can fall apart very fast. Right. As I'm sure the same way in, in your business a little bit. Definitely. Right? In real estate, Absolutely. Yep. yep. And so um, I think trusting that you're doing it right, but also not. And here's here's kind of the, the the back end of that. Also not hanging up on someone's potential. Mm. Right. Preach. Like oh, someone's right. potential in a relationship, in business, uh, someone's potential and you just ke keep holding on to that potential. If it doesn't happen after a while, you got to let go. Man. Yeah. And that's, that's something that I just keep learning. Right. And so that's just something that I'm developing, but, um, yeah, we've all been there. Definitely. How, how about you though? What, what? Um, I think on my side of it, my weakness um, you went weakness first. I like that. Is, I, 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 I'm just doing it. You started the order. Get it out of the way. <laughs> um, is that I think it's hard for me to say no. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I think that's my biggest weakness is like I'm trying to help everyone. I'm trying to do You're everything. Yes, I, say, I am. Say yes I just, to everything. Yeah. I'm just go, go, go. I just try and, you know, seek every opportunity. Sure. I want to help everyone win. If somebody wants to like me and I know really this is taken away from what I need to get done, sometimes I'll squeeze it in yeah. and then kind of over overwork myself. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's, that's probably my biggest weakness. I would say that's your beauty um, and your beast though. It's definitely. And I think both on both sides, the strengths and the weakness are, are a flip True. of a coin on both True. sides. Always yeah. it's, it's a good thing and a bad thing. Yeah. Um, but I just know sometimes if you push either one of them on a, on a scale and one's, you know, if I'm helping too much mm-hmm. and then I'm not able to grow to be able to help more. Mm-hmm. Um, so it can kind of be that yin and yang where you need to find that balance where you're helping, where you're able to still grow. Because when you grow, you can help more people, sure. right? Yeah. Um, I think on the other side of it, my biggest strength um, is is a is a goal. Like I'm ready. I'm a, like execute. If we come up with an idea um, and I, Chris definitely has portions of this too, but we will have a meeting or discuss something, me and Chris, and like, I will leave the meeting, email him. Yeah, here we go. So we're going to set up a group, like me and um, Chris have set up a group called uh, Mindset Madness. Yep. And we just, we spoke about this. We're at Whole Foods sitting down. We was like, what do we need to do? This is what we need to do. We're trying to... Sitting down for about two and a half hours, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we, we definitely (laughs) brainstormed and came up with like specific plans and action steps to do. And then right away, we're both just like, boom, I've got this. I'm bringing this person. We're doing this. We're doing this. And it's it's go time. And, and And I speak about this now um at a more more mature point in life where i'm really trying to compress everything that i do it's got to be done in a short amount mm-hmm. of time so i can get the maximum results and yep. get everything otherwise it's, if i'm drawing it out for two years and a year and talking about like I'm, I'm i don't have time for that i've got to set goals to retire get stuff done so i need to compress and execute right away yeah so, yeah yeah and i think a, a side note to that is And for those of you guys listening, I think it's a a huge point that I think you can take from this is probably about two years ago, my life changed when I made a New Year's resolution and I didn't usually used to make those, right? But I made a New Year's resolution where if I wanted to meet for coffee with somebody that I really trusted or looked up to or they were crushing business, let's say we've all been there where we run into, um, you know, somebody at a charity event or a birthday party or a wedding. And we go, Delroy, man, good to see you. We should totally grab coffee. I'm the one that literally on the spot is like, they're like, okay, yeah, let's totally do that, which no one ever does, yeah. right? No one ever does. But I was yeah. the one on the spot being like, cool, does 9 a.m. on Tuesday work for you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and they just look at you like, huh? like oh, wait, I was like, just saying, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, but just, I'm a doer. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So I think that that's, a, that's really helped because now my, my schedule is, it, it's just, a to Z, right? Like yep. it, it's so structured now where it didn't used to be because I'm actually going, I I, I need to meet with Delroy. Yeah. Like that's who I want to meet with, yeah. you know? And You're more, we're just like, I use that term in, in real estate and kind of the way I do things is called on purpose. Like everything yeah. I do, it's not by accident anymore. There's I randomly met this person. There's like a there's reason. a reason. It's all on purpose and we're making the appointments. We're not just fluffing it. Or, yeah, yeah. yeah, let's grab coffee. Yeah. And then, you know, weeks go by. You never met up with that person. And then you see him somewhere else out accidentally. And you're like, oh, yeah, remember we said yeah. we're going to get coffee. And then you just, wait. again, that's that compression. Like, and and that's know. why somebody's brilliant idea takes three years to come out. Exactly. You exactly. Know? You're waiting to build your team, doing this and that. And, and when, it, when it can actually be done very quickly, like people think things take a long time. It's because they're taking so much time planning and not doing the right now steps that yeah. can be done. There's not yeah. not everything is going to happen overnight. Right. But there's things that you can do specifically so that it's happening. So even like when people see me doing things sometimes, they're like, wow, man, like so much going on. No, no, I'm not even nowhere close to the goal right. yet. But it looks like I am because I'm just doing the wheels the are turning. Yeah, you're, the wheels you, you started are, the car. Exactly. You're, you're, you don't know where you're going, maybe, right. but you started the car. Exactly. I'm starting to put the address in the GPS, but you know I'm going somewhere right. just because of my actions. For that, sure. That's it. So yeah, yeah. I think that's 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 good tips. So that being said, let's tackle this. What's your three year plan? What does that look like in three years? Um, is that to how? So wait, three year plan on 
my real estate business, personal business. This could be business. anything. Where are what? you going to be in three years? What does this look like? So my vision of be Delroy in three years. Your Delroy vision three okay. years from now. Delroy, the, um, I will be crushing it in the luxury market mm -hmm. 100%. And how long have you been in the luxury real estate now? One and a half, just over a year. Okay. Over a year. And real estate in total? Uh, seven years. Seven years. Seven years, yeah. Um, so been doing that for a while. So now, and that's the thing is the three years, like that's going to be my 10 year mark. Yeah. So this year and a half has really been the success yeah. um, of real estate because of that grind and now that turnover of everything that I put into it in the past. And that 10 year mark is where now... I've built it into a full-fledged actual business. Like it's a running company where there's full-time employees, mm -hmm. um, but I'm I'm dishing out a lot more now. Meaning I'm giving that deal, that's for that guy. That deal is for that guy. I'm very more laser focused on a specific clientele mm. um, and type of person. Like mm. not, I don't, some people look at their businesses in real estate based on houses and locations. Yeah. Mine's not like that. Mine is a lifestyle and it's the type of people I want to work with. I'm building that database of people that are like-minded, that are positive, that are energetic, that want some education on real estate. Maybe they want to get into the investing side or they're trying to upgrade in, you know, into the market sure. in their home. But they're a type of person. So at that 10-year mark, I will 100% only work with that type of person mm -hmm. in real estate. I will either reject or or transfer every other person. Um, so that's that's what I'm building up to in real estate. And with that comes being able to spend more time with my family because I'm leaving some business now sure. on the table. I'm not racking my brain to get every single deal that's going. Um, that also then leaves time for me to give more volunteer time to the charity, Denver Gents, help the youth more. So alleviating a third of my business to either give away or reject gives me one third more time sure. on charity and my family. Yeah. So that's kind of my full circle of my three years. More charity, more family, more focused business. Got it. Um, but really doing the same things I'm doing now, just changing the, the pie charts, Sure. you know, the sizes of them. Yeah. What, what about, about uh, what about income streams? Where do you want that in three years? Um, income stream, um, it, in terms of the pie, it still probably will be... Um, eighty percent real estate, and then twenty percent um, charity or social media. Yeah. Um, probably like fifteen percent social media, five percent charity, if that. Yeah. Um, but I want to get that pie actually to seventy percent real estate and like twenty percent social media and ten percent charity. Yeah. That's how I want it to look. Now you and I are so similar in the social media aspect where we've learned it. Yeah. Right. Um, I think you guys from London say learned it, right? Le no, we say learned. You guys say yeah, learned, learned it. it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> um, but did you learn from anybody, or did you just kind of? So, so I think in the social media game, if you want to be good at it, you have to be a chameleon. Yeah. You know, you have to fi you have to figure out what the next thing is. If you yeah. don't know Insta you stories, move the times. right? Then yeah. that's a problem. If you don't know this, it's a problem. If you don't know how to, you know, you don't know the hashtag game, that's a problem. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, did anybody teach you that? No, I, you know, a lot of everything that I've gone through in business and personal stuff, a lot of it has been self-taught um, and self-taught in terms of like, obviously I didn't go out and like read a book on it, but I'll go and find the information or find the person that knows the information. Yeah. I didn't really like, oh, I'm going to go to this class, sit down and learn because normally in those classes, those people have no idea how like, the, I've yet to actually go to a social media class mm -hmm. and be like, I'm blown away. Yeah. Like I just, yeah. now I know how to do it. Yeah. Like, that was worth it. Yeah, no, I haven't. I've never found that class. So yeah. maybe there is one. Um, if anyone in the comment section wants to let us know, um, I've never found that. So I've always just looked for the person who was the best that I've seen or similar to what I want to achieve mm. on there, and I just DM them. I'm mm. like, hey, yeah. how'd you do that? Like, what did you do to get there? Yeah. And what can I do to get my shit there? Now, I think that what you just said is so important, especially for young listeners, right? Like, I love millennials, and everybody gives them so much, you know, grief. Yeah. But I love it because they reach out. They're not afraid to look dumb. 
Yeah. Right. And they'll yeah. ask you a million questions. And I think that that is what the older generation and I consider myself in that. Right. Well, and now you think you're in the older generation. No, I'm not. You and I are barely millennials. You know that, right? <laughs> I am. Right? I'm we're barely. We're creeping barely, in, creeping we're barely in. millennials, man. But um, I have noticed that the people that do really well, they just are OK with not having that ego and they yeah. can ask anybody. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, ne I'm never I'm never afraid to ask. I mean, I think that actually. So first action step from this mm. podcast would seriously be do not be afraid to ask. Yeah. Like today, right now, yeah. whatever you're trying to achieve, yep. you must know someone in that space that you should just reach out to. Because, yep. you know, nine times out of ten, they're going to reply. And on, like sometimes you think that person's never going to reply yeah. to me. Like I'm yeah. not even going to bother send him a message. Like, yeah. but I messaged this person. They had like 100,000, 250,000 followers on IG and I was like, hey man, like I see your page. You're kind of doing what I'm thinking about doing. Bro, like an hour later, the guy's replying to me. We're, we're talking yeah. in DM for like two hours yeah. about how for me to get to where he's at. And I'm like, sweet, yeah. like that was free information. And because the guys are normally cool, like they remember going through the work yeah. and getting up there. So they're like, oh, this guy's trying to get there, man. Sure. Let me help him out. Let me give him some tips yeah. on, on how to do it. Yeah. And, and like, you're not, don't just bother them all the time. Just get, and make sure your questions, that's another thing. Like, don't ever say, hey man, can I ask you a question? Like that is already wasting time. Like yep. just start asking just the go. questions, just yeah. go. Because they don't want to send three messages asking three different questions. The, right, yeah. exactly. Just ask all the yeah. stuff you need to get done yeah. and then just get so, it done. So find your hero. If it's not that person, find another hero and keep going at it. Right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. definitely. Um, and, I, and I would say do that now. Mm -hmm. Like don't, don't sit around wasting yeah. time. Totally get, it, get it done right now. Totally agree. Um, so what, what, what about you? Have you ever reached out kind of in that, in that capacity yourself or are you? Oh, are you, uh... so many times. Yeah. Oh man. So many times. And, and, and just like you, I would say that probably a third of the people that I didn't think were going to come around or I didn't think were going to give me any advice were, were very gracious and, and super helpful. You know, I think everybody, I think that's one of the biggest things in any business is people don't have mentors. Yes. You know, so many people are just trying to do it on their own or trying to figure it out. And I'm like, cut out the steps and get there way faster with a mentor that's been there, that's done it, that's in your field. Yeah. And w um, would you say so in that, like, what are the reasons like that's that's one of them, like right there. I'm thinking like, what's the reason sometimes people are not succeeding mm -hmm. in the industry? Mm -hmm. Is it like you said, having a mentor? Mm -hmm. Is that one of the pieces of the puzzle what are the pieces of the puzzle do you think are yeah. why people are not seeing their full potential i think it's two things i think it's two things and it, i've seen this on a lot of different businesses okay number one is they don't give it enough time okay whether it was solar energy whether it was network marketing whether it was interactive video you know whatever i'm but doing but i'm broke chris i'm not making any money chris what? right like that's you know sometimes in their head that's what they're saying to themselves like yeah. they want to put in the time but for that mo for in the in the yeah. present they're like how am i going to keep going yeah. you know what well, how do you push through that if you if you need to put that time in like you're saying how do you keep going yeah that's a good point and and you know there's a lot of people out there that are afraid to pick up another job right and, and here's what I think. You have to find something that can pay you while you sleep and is such a low investment. Yep. That is the key. That's what I think. No matter what you're doing, like if you can find something that will pay you while you sleep and it's such a low investment with a huge possibility of return, I don't care if you do it two hours a week. I don't care if you do it five hours a week. That will start growing if you're passionate about it. And that's where I was going for my number two point is you got to be passionate. Yeah. Like I think that people get into something and they're like, well, this is what my parents wanted me to do or this is what my degree is in, right? But they're never really passionate about it. And so I, I just think that those two things, like the passion plus the time, passion and time together, it, it's you're going to win. Yeah. You just are. And I just see people give up right before they're about to have that breakthrough because they've gone so long of not having enough breakthroughs. So start winning small. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah, like yeah, get yeah. the small wins and really celebrate those. Definitely. And I, and I mean, in that, I'll just give my personal um, example and experience of yeah. that. So when I was going through and first getting my license and coming up, in, like I never even tell people this, um, but 
I I did other jobs like I was I I know how to cut hair. I'm, I was a barber. In I believe London that. Before. I believe I believe that man. <laughs> um, but so when I was doing my real estate stuff, and I wasn't getting any money, you know, and maybe I'm not getting any closings this week. Yeah. I would drive around and cut all my friends' hair for twenty yep. bucks. Yeah. Like. While people think, at that point, people thought I had made it. That's what I mean. To the public, they thought I had made it. That's what I mean. And um, But I never I, I never said like, hey, I'm not making it, I'm cutting hair. But I just knew, again. You weren't where you wanted the, to be yet. I'm, I'm, right. I'm just not right. there. And, and my action steps were still towards getting there. Mm -hmm. But I did have to pay the bills still. I still yeah. had to do that. I still had to buy groceries. I still had kids to feed. So I'm like, man, I'll work here and then I can come. I used to go cut hair at 11 o'clock at night, mm -hmm. like nine o'clock at night, whenever I needed to, because I was so passionate about real estate. Yeah. That was like, I'm, I'm getting to where I need to be in real yeah. estate, no matter what. But whatever. you had to take care of your bills. Had to like take you, care that, that's the number yes. one is you have to take care of this over here. And until that is taken care yeah. of, it's almost hard to chase that passion, if you will. Right? Def oh yeah, you got like one foot out, almost yeah. like a little bit all like the you're time, not, you're right? Not, yeah, you're yeah, not yeah. sure if you're gonna make it right. because these bills are just hanging over your head, and you <laughs> yeah. got kids and all this. And I, yes. I see this happen yeah. so often. And these days, like even now, because you think when I'm doing this, this is seven, eight years ago mm. coming through this whole ringer. Yeah, like. There wasn't even no like Uber and stuff, or, yeah. or if there was, it wasn't big enough to like. Now there are so, so many, many like side quick, hustles. There's so many side so hustles. Many side hustles. There's, like I, the people these days that tell me, oh man, I'm, I can't, I can't do that because I yeah. got uh, my bills, man. I don't know if I can keep doing this. I'm thinking, bro. Yeah. Do you know how many hours there are in a day? Go and do that from this time at night. Go drive Uber. Go deliver packages for Amazon. Go do. There's a million yeah. ways to make quick bucks yeah. these days that you can just suffice your bills with. And it's like, what you know? That means to me, you're just not that passionate mm -mm. about doing it's mindset. What? Yeah, yeah. Because totally. you'll see those people at a concert. You'll see those oh. people. You'll see those people. You know, at a concert, you'll see them out at the bar. You'll see them wherever, and, and they're yeah. still gonna struggle because the Netflix is more important than that two hours of where they could be doing something. I don't care if you're selling bracelets online and that's your thing or necklaces, right? Like yeah. figure something out that you enjoy doing. Or like you said earlier, there's so many people on Instagram that I, that I look at, I'm like, what a cool idea. I yeah. never thought of that, right? Yeah. Like if that was one of my passions and I was like, I wanna give piano lessons or whatever it is, yeah. I would ask that person, how are you doing that? Are you doing it in your free time? How did you start that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you just start the questions that you, that you were talking yeah. about, right? Yeah, totally. I'm trying to think, um, on what do I think, on when they, why do they fail? What do I see mostly in my industry? I think mine is probably they're chasing money. Mm -hmm. Not relationships. Yeah, just not not anything other than even relationships or pa there's no relationships. There's no passion. There's nothing besides the glitz and glamour. Yeah. They're chasing like this lifestyle of TV um, that they think is in real estate, mm. um, but they have no idea the hours and the paperwork yeah. and and the people managing and all of the back end stuff. So they they get into it. And they get a massive brick wall slammed in their face real quick, and they're like, "Oh, I, like I didn't know it was it was yeah. all of this." Like, man, like, how am I gonna get paid? I'm stressing out. So it is they they don't put in the time, but I think there's just an unrealistic expectation mm -hmm. of what being a real estate agent mm -hmm. and being a good real estate agent at that. What what does that actually entail? Um, and it's and it's hard. And I always tell people like, go be an assistant for a little while first. Mm -hmm. Like, at least you're, you're gonna get paid, and you're gonna see the real deal yeah. of what real estate is. But people think, oh, it's easy. Like, I'm my real estate agent. Like, all they did was show up, open the door, and got a check, so I can do that. And they skip steps, but they don't know all the back end stuff that that real estate agent was doing yeah. to get them through that door to get them that check and to get all the paperwork done. So I think people miss out on a lot of steps that mm -hmm. happen in real estate and just see the end result. And then they're like, they get burnt out real yeah. quick. I mean, getting burnt out is a serious thing too. Yeah, for sure. What What would you say with that being said on the other end, then what are what's one or two points that they should be focusing on? Um, you You really need to know what you're passionate about. Like I have to go back to your point is like, because 
when you and if you're in real estate you have to love the process like you can't just like the check you've got like i love like negotiating back and forth with another real estate agent i love going online and finding a house mm -hmm. that maybe wasn't on the market for someone yeah i love writing a contract and submitting it and that feeling when i know that phone's about to ring and that yeah. guy's gonna think like oh i'm gonna win this one and i'm i'm back like i love all the in between you have to love all of the in between stuff before the check comes mm -hmm. To be great at this so and, and that goes for any industry you have to love the journey mm -hmm. of it so people need to find Definitely what agree. journey yeah. they are passionate about not yeah. just the business or the industry or all their goals and because the goals normally have nothing to do with normally the industry or the business you're yeah. in so you've got to find something that you love the journey of if you like if you want to be the best uber driver you gotta love just sure. driving sure. like that's what you gotta love or, or people yeah or people yeah, yeah, talking yeah. to people entertaining yeah. people in the car like that you've got to find the journey that you love yeah be what they need to focus on now what about like how long did it take you to have to cold call like like when you started you yeah. probably didn't have all those referrals lined up you probably weren't right you weren't who you are now and you weren't known like you are now so like, how long did you have to go through that stuff? Because that stuff isn't fun. I did that in solar energy, at, you know, at the age of 31. I mean, I really had to humble myself, right? From going from nightclubs and being the quote unquote, you know, man yeah. <laughs> in yeah, that yeah. world, which is silly, but it, you know, yeah. from that to people literally going, Hey, are you okay? I heard you were like knocking doors and like, you know what I, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like I heard that you're cold calling people yeah. and, and trying to all these relationships. And yeah. so what would you say to that person? Because that part's not necessarily fine. It's a very rare breed that really enjoys getting a door slammed in their face. Yeah. 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 You know? So how long did you have to do that? And, and what would you say to that person? Um, so a couple of points to, to, to go on that is I think I actually, and I think this is actually true for most people. I was who I was today, who I was back then. I, I was the same person. It's just other people didn't know I was who I am today. Got it. You know? Yeah. And then in terms of like knocking on doors or just doing that grunt work, um, like I didn't. I was just like, no, I didn't care. Like, I'm just going to go. Because you knew that the future was greater. Yeah, because right? I already knew who I was. You, you exactly. knew, I think yeah. self-awareness mm -hmm. is actually like one of the, my biggest motivating factors. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm so self-aware of myself that I know. Like, sometimes I'm self-aware, but my, my I would say even like my wife knows an even greater me. Or when you have a good spouse, like they can pull yeah. out even more greatness of That's you. That's huge, yeah. But like... I am very self-aware. Like I knew that today would come mm -hmm. at that stage. Like mm -hmm. I'm like, you just know, know today will come. So let me knock on your door or pick up the phone and call you and let you know like, yeah. hey, I'm Delroy. Like you should want to work with me because in five, six years, I'm this guy. Mm -hmm. I didn't say that. But sure. that, that when you have that confidence and you make those calls, it's a different feeling because when they slam the door on you or you get no's or you get rejections, it's like, ah, oh, they just don't know who I am yet. Like, mm -hmm. so it'll be all right. I got to figure out the person who does see the yeah. value yeah, that's good. in who I am. So I just kept going until like, oh, you see the value. Oh, Let's work together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do this because what will happen is over mm -hmm. time, those people are the people that start referring you, start telling you, bro, this guy, trust me, yeah. he's he's the greatest real estate agent. He knows what he's doing. And they see the value in, in it already from the beginning. So if you don't think that you're going to be great at what you do, mm -hmm. again, going back to passion, if you're not passionate about it, when you knock on that door and someone's, get out of here, like you're like, you're oh, done. Yeah, I, should, I should get out you're of here, done, man. Yeah. I yeah. should just go back exactly. to my nine to five. Exactly. And they'll just crush you immediately. Mm -hmm. Like they, they won't even give bat an eye. Um, uh, uh, at like they can, they can tell like, you know, there's like the, the sales calls thing that they tell you like smile before you start calling, like smile, like yeah. tell yourself a joke before you go to the door or whatever, yeah. because you have to be in a mindset of like, this is me. Like mm -hmm. I'm, you should want to work with me, yeah. but you got to have that, that composure be humble in it but know that that's how good you are in the time if not people will smell it out right they will know yeah. instantly that you're not that guy like bro no right no not happening yeah. what about what about you is there is there some some stuff you would 
point out where you're like, I, I did this at the beginning because of like you knew who you were or you, you just like, how did you feel about knocking on doors yourself? Like, yeah, I, th- I mean, let's start here because <laughs> if you want to crush any business for the rest of your life and get that scare, I call it just that, 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 that like in your gut, right? That feeling of rejection. We get it when we're young, right? We get it when we're, you know, in a relationship or you're, or you're hurt or any of that. And that's just all natural, but knocking doors, you guys, <laughs> that will change you into a different animal where you can sell anything, right? Because you, you realize now how to read people. And I think that that's something that a lot of people never learn, mm. Mm. right? Is how to read people is like, Hey, this person, I can tell by their body language, how they came to the door mm-hmm. that they're having a rough day. You know, this lady came to the door and she's carrying her baby. She's probably not going to love this in your face stuff. We're going to go, Hey, so sorry. You know what I mean? Yep. It looks like the baby just woke up. How's your day? That's so different than being like, Hey, have you heard about the new power plan? And she's like, please leave. You know what I mean? Like, totally. like please don't ever come here again. Like, so it, it's being okay with failing forward. Yeah. Right. Like that's so big and people don't like to fail, but if you can stick in it and stay in the saddle and fail forward, um, man, I and, just think the reward's so huge. And on, on, what you said about being able to read people, Mm -hmm. how much does that impact success rate in your business? Right. Like how knowing like, Oh, this person's in, in maybe two minutes. Yeah. Being able to read someone, scan their body language and a few words that come out of their mouth and be like, this person's going to be it person who's going to buy a home this person's not going to be this person's motivated this person's going to be hard to deal with like being able to read someone that well which is one of my skill sets that i apply to real estate like the amount of time that it saves you and the amount of steps forward 100 that you can take and leap in front of the next person Mm -hmm. because you're like yeah, I, I already spoke to that guy and he's not going to, but you, the other guy just spent two days yep. trying to convert that person yep. into a client and they thought it was so close. It yeah. was so, I was so close. Yeah. And I left that person after speaking to him for two minutes yeah. and then spoke to 15 other people yeah. in the time that that person's working on that one deal. Yeah. Bro, that, elo- that pushes your career so rapidly 100%. so quickly being yeah. able to so even you building your business you're able to collect your leaders in that type of way right yeah or, yeah absolutely so i i think that it's still being okay with failure right because you only learn what to say um one of my good friends he says selling roofs or selling solar energy or selling real estate or selling he's done a lot of different things he's very successful and he said um it go it went back to i was always the one that would talk to the girl at the at the volleyball camp or at the bar when i was older he's like and my my friends wouldn't and he's like i learned the rejection and, and learned from it of what to say and what not to say and how to actually approach this person you know what i mean and yeah. i think that that's so big because if you if you're hanging on you know these limiting beliefs before you go in if you don't do it I just think that you're, you're going to struggle so right, for a while. You know? You're going to struggle for a while. And so, no, um, but I was thinking before when you were saying like, these are the things that you're going to need when you want to do this for a long period of time, right? You want to, you want to have this success or you want to have a long yeah. run in business. So these, these are the action and the, the things that you need to implement. Mm-hmm. But what about even daily, you know, small things, small tasks, like routines, do you mm. have like a morning routine? Do you have a daily routine? And what, what, why should we have routines? What do you think? Right. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I think this is one <laughs> of the biggest things is um, people don't know what to do daily to succeed. And if you don't start with one thing, then you don't get to the number two, right? If you're not consistent in one thing. So my thing is my bed. You know, I always start with the bed. There's a YouTube video about it that really changed my life a couple of years ago. Um, he's a sergeant, I think. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, I know you, the video. You've probably seen yep. it. You know, if you want to change the world, make your bed. Yeah, is basically what it is, and and it's so true because the same way in my company, right? If you start saying I'm in health and wellness, right, and you know that nutrition, if people start giving into what they, you know, giving into their cravings right away, then it's already a tick that it's okay that they failed. So it's already a tick in the beginning of the day if you don't make your bed. You're already failing at one thing, right? And the more tasks you do and the more tasks that you win at, us as humans are basically made the way, 
right? Or made one way to actually, um, like, we want to have tasks, right? Like, oh, we, yeah. we, we need them. Yeah, we yeah, need yeah. to have tasks. Yeah. Even so, if we don't know that we need them. Exactly. We do. We do. Exactly. <laughs> and so it, there's one win. There's another win. Okay, I did this. There's a third win. And then your confidence goes up. And then you're yeah. also feeling having that feeling of like, I accomplished something today. Yeah. And then carry that into business, yeah. right? And that's where I think that, you know, if your tasks turn into like routines yeah. in business, that's where the gold is. Definitely. And, and, and I've just noticed like the most, the, the, some of my mentors, they all say almost the same thing in different ways, but they all say, if you master the mundane, right, you will crush whatever business you want. And yeah. I think most people get tired of the mundane mm -hmm. and they, they, they think that it means that maybe they're not passionate, but there's always going to be things in any business oh, yeah. of parts that you maybe don't love. Absolutely. Right. And, yeah. Or maybe you loved it for the first year or two, but, but year three, you're like, ah, you know what I mean? Or year five, you're like, that's ah, not my favorite thing anymore. Yeah. But the mastering the mundane, and I think that so many people don't do that. So, yeah. um, you know, routine wise, yeah, I think start simple. I don't think that very many people have have that many routines. You know, what about you? Yeah. What, I, what, what's your daily routine? And maybe even like weekly, do you have a weekly checklist or is yes. it just daily? Um, I've got daily, weekly, month. I, Mine's pretty aggressive just because of my industry and, and real estate. I, I'm yeah. To hit do you do the, and, do you do the three year plan and then the 10 year plan and then the crazy money plan, right? Yes. All yeah. of it and work and work backwards. Um, but daily, um, and I'll start by saying this is I was watching a YouTube video, um, and it was a guy just talking about kind of your morning routine. Mm -hmm. And he said, that the first 20 minutes of when you wake up, like that intake of whatever you do, whether it be on social yeah. media, you yeah. like lay in bed and hit snooze, whatever it is kind of sets precedent for the rest of your day. Yeah. Um, so if you are waking up and then, you know, you're, you're, you think you're in control or you're doing whatever you're doing, but then you get on social media or YouTube and you start listening to some craziness that's happening in the world or, you don't know it, but you might have that chip on your shoulder for yeah. the rest of the day because of that video you watch. So yeah. the morning for me, like, and I, I believe that, obviously everyone can have their own opinion, but I believe that strongly. So I try and make sure in the morning, mm -hmm. like it's peaceful. I wake up, yeah. I, I spend a moment with my kids, get them off to school. I get back home. I'll sit in silence. I'll meditate, go to the gym, work out whatever it is, I do a bunch of little steps and routines that I have for myself, affirmations, yeah. um, and not even look at my phone yet. Yeah. Don't check social media. Don't do nothing until I get to my actual office where work yeah. actually starts. Yeah. So I'll do all of those things and then I'll start my work routine, sure. which is calls and notes and doing different things like so that. So what time does your work routine start? When it, it starts, so my actual work routine would start anywhere between because I'm flexible sure. in my industry, but it's between nine and nine thirty. Okay. But I can have moments where there's stuff like this. I don't want people to be like, oh, like it has to be here or mm -hmm. it has to be there. Mm -hmm. Some mornings I might wake up at 5 a.m. Right. and like get all my stuff done, and then at like seven I'm working. Yeah. Or there's some days I might spend a moment with my kids, come back. I want to just get dressed slowly and do my hair and do whatever I want to do, pick out my outfit and just take my time after mm -hmm. I've worked out and get to the office. And I know, because the thing is, is that we need to realize certain things are not that serious. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's not that serious. It, it is when you're doing it, take it very seriously. Sure. But the world is not going to end if you don't reply to that email right now. Yeah. Every single person can wait one hour unless like they're in a burning building and you need to go and save them. 9 a.m., 6 yeah. a.m., whenever it is, you can wait for yeah. one other. If I'm at the gym and I leave my uh, my actual gym has chargers inside the lockers. You lock your phone in the locker and, and it charges inside. There. I don't even walk around the gym with my phone anymore. Mm -hmm. Have my headphones on. I can click the songs left and right. I'll check my email when I'm done here. Yeah. Like So I think having those boundaries as well as the routine um, is what's key. So I'll get into the office, whatever time it may be after mm -hmm. I finish my routines. That's more important to me, Co accomplishing my routines and yeah. then starting work. Yeah. It doesn't matter about the times as much to yeah, me. That's good. Um, and then once I'm there, so if I get there at 9 a.m., I will just start right away hammering out. The first thing I do, I have a, um, 
a notepad in my office and it has my uh, yearly income goal in there and I write in there if you look at it, it's got pages and pages and pages and it says I'm enjoying receiving X yeah. amount of dollars yeah. and I write that I think the pages have uh, 24 lines and it doesn't oh. sound like a lot but I'm telling you write something 24 times yeah. your wrist starts to yeah. ache and as you're writing it and your wrist is aching you start thinking, yeah, I better get this goal. Like yeah. it starts putting a mental thing on like, I'm about to kill today right. because this is annoying doing this and I want to crush this goal so I don't have to write this thing anymore. Sure. Yeah. Um, and then I'll start doing my the rest of my work stuff. Now you talked about affirmations a little bit ago, mm -hmm. right? Give me a couple examples of, of some of your affirmations daily. Like, is this like a stand in the mirror thing and you're like, you are powerful, you are strong. Like, what does this look like for you though? Yeah, so there's different ways. Give me Delroy's I, affirmations. I, I, will, I will do it and they change. Um, and I just moved house. So if I'm sloppy on my affirmations right now, it's because I haven't put them up on my mirror. Yeah. Um, but I'll give you examples of what they do sound like. It says like, I, uh, I did attract the greatest people into my life that have positive mindsets and good attitudes. You know, so it's always done in the present, like it's happened already. Yeah. And what I do is I actually get a dry erase marker and I write them on my mirror mm -hmm. in my bathroom. So when I go in there, they'll be on the mirror in my bathroom. And then I have um, a cleaning lady who comes every two weeks and she'll what I tell, like wipe it off. And then I'll go back and I have to rewrite it again. So one, I'm constantly having to rewrite. It, so it's a reminder that I have to, you know, make sure I'm doing those things. And then also I'm actually doing affirmations. So it's like a double whammy of, of getting it done. But it has G to give be me some verbiage, though. Like, 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 what are you writing up there? I'm writing. So that's what I said. So that actually is the verbiage. I will say um, it felt great to um, earn X amount Got of it. dollars. Okay. Um, the uh, I I'm in love with the uh, people that I'm around. Um, we have such a happy family. I don't. I've never said that on there. But I'm, <laughs> I'm just giving you yeah, an yeah, example. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. That was a bit corny. I'm, no, I'm not that. I corny get it though. Yeah, but yeah. I'm just giving you an example of sure. what what it would be like. Yeah. I like that you do that every couple of weeks. You ever wipe that down? Yeah. And it's like you got to go back up and kind of start that over. You got to redo. You know, it. That's that's really important. Yeah. And and when I first started. Um, it and and the reason that I'm not fresh on the affirmations is because I actually do them personally now. So I haven't written them up because I moved house. So I yeah. I go and actually like think about I'm gonna write this and then do it. Um, but when I first started, I actually would just find affirmations. Like I would type in Google like you know positive affirmations yeah. and then find stuff that related to me and then just print it out and write it myself. Yeah. Um. So that's how I first started. So just in case people. Like it's a, it's another level to like start creating them yourself. And mm -hmm. sometimes people might get stuck there. So if they want to skip that step and make it easier for them, just go online, find some good affirmations that relate to you yeah. and write them down, print them out. Um, I always say write them down. I just think it's a little bit more powerful. Yeah. Um, but every, just start somewhere um, and get affirmations. I mean, just saying it out loud. And I say it out loud too. Like I'm not like, just reading it mm -hmm. off the board like I, I say it and that's big I say that's it to big. myself yeah, yeah. yeah. universe God it's got it they gotta hear it yeah definitely definitely yeah, yeah. and uh, this like it's coming from London so let me say this because people in England might be watching this yeah, right yeah yeah for me doing this stuff is like nuts yeah. like this is not the totally. normal like this is England is conservative totally. like me yeah. like if you ask me five years ago if I'm writing affirmations and writing in a book or doing any of this stuff, I'd be like, you're a you're weirdo, right, man. Like, right. what are you doing? Like, right. <laughs> why are you doing that stuff? Yeah. But I'm here to say I've started doing it and huge changes, yeah. massive amount of change and progress um, in my life. I, I think self-growth and self-awareness are like two of my biggest motivating factors these days um, to like fuel me in, in the direction of like trying to achieve my goals at this point now. Yeah. Self-awareness. Let's talk about that for a second. Okay. Self-awareness. I just think that you, if you don't know what you offer, yeah. whether in business, relationship, anything, right? If you don't know who you are, yeah. I don't, I think that you come across as being unsure. Do you know what I mean? Definitely. Like, so tell me a little bit about you and self-awareness. Just like, I know that you've probably, were you always this confident? 
Like, were you, or did you have some times where you're like, you know, I don't know. Like, did you ever doubt real estate? Were you ever like, I don't know if I'm going to make it and be, mm, be real? No, no, definitely. Definitely. I did. There were definitely times like, cause this is during the recession, right? Yeah. So I'm in the recession. There were definitely times where it was tough. No, no. How are you going to pay your bills? How are you going to get through this? When the next deal is coming? Like yeah. in real estate, when you don't have any deals, like, yeah. No pipeline. Yeah, nothing. Yeah. Like you are literally just sitting in your house like, yeah. okay, like how am I going to get a check? Mm -hmm. Like you have to start doing things. So, I mean, there were definitely times through that and it wasn't even as much of I was even doubting myself. It was that it was the doubt came in when the market shifted and I had never experienced that change. You know, that time where now the prices are down, everyone's yeah. depressed yeah. You know, these are this is not my mindset, right? So I'm having to deal with people who had different mindset to me and still work in this scenario mm -hmm. and dig into this new environment. So you're like, can I do this? Like, the, I have to, every person I deal with, I'm now having to lift them up. Like, personally, emotionally, I'm going to their house, they're potentially getting kicked out on the street and I have to sit down at the dining table with them and be like, look, like, I know you might not see it, but like, we're going to get through this. Like, we're going to make it. And like, sometimes you're telling them that and maybe in your head, you're like, shit, I don't know. If we're I don't know if we're going to do it. Yeah. I don't know if we're going to do yeah, this, bro. I might be lying. I'm going to try. Yeah. I'm not lying. Like, I know I'm going to try my best, but I don't know if we're going to make it. But my mind's telling me we're going to make it. But I'm just like, this is, I don't know, man. Yeah. This is tough. Yeah. This is tough. Like, it's so tough that you're like. You have the you have those glimpses of what if it doesn't what if yeah. what if yeah. what if you keep getting those what mm. if moments yep. and you have to keep shaking them like no 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna just keep doing it and if it works it works yeah um, so I think self aware and going through stuff like that and that's why it's important to have the door knocking um, open houses or you know whatever it is you go through going through that. Because that builds your confidence to know what can be achieved, mm -hmm. right? Because if you knock on all those doors and you're like, oh, out of 50 people, two said yes. That's cool. I know now, like, if we didn't get this, I can get this one done because I've already if done I, this 200 times before. If I before. do 100 people, it's going to be five, right? Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you start being able to quantify it after you go through it. But sometimes you knock in on, the person knocks on eight doors. They didn't get to nine and 10 and they're like, I'm done. Like nobody, yeah. nobody's gonna say yes. Yeah, I'm over it. Yeah. I'm over so it. let me ask you this, and I was just thinking about this. Why do you think some people have a crazy drive mm -hmm. to be more, and some don't? Like what? Like, and think about that for a second. Why? While I go on, I just know so many people. We all know that potential, right? Where in like in college, you're like, man, this Eric dude, he's so smart, he's gonna kill it. And then before you know it, he just was like, and I won't mention any any uh, you know. Um, jobs or anything that, that he's done. Yeah, yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, it was like, man, this guy was going to kill it. And he just he just seemed okay with doing the $35,000 a year, you know, struggling through life. Yeah. So I, I always wonder, I'm like, that was kind of my gauge, right? Of like, why did this guy settle for that? Right? Yeah. When he was so talented, so smart, went to Brown University. I mean, just a smart dude. People loved him. And he, he had such a huge potential. I see that all the time. You know, and then you see the person that you're like, man, that person's going to struggle. And they do so well because they learn sales or they learn, you know, people or they learn relationships and they get investors or they have an idea. Right. Yeah. But so why do you think it is that people just don't have that drive or they kind of give up? Do you think it goes back to passion? Um, I think definitely passion plays a part in it. Like this question, we could have a conversation literally just on this. We could question. do this for an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Because. You know, I think it also is to do with environment, mm -hmm. upbringing, parenting. Like friends, there's so friends, friends yeah. you know, there's so many pieces to it um, because you can be dropped in different places and you can have completely different outcomes. Yeah. Right. Um, and it may be just based on that. Or you could be in a complete shithole and come out to be a superstar. You just never know. I don't think it's one of those things where it's. Like, I don't think it's in you. You know, some people will be like, oh, it's in you. There are certain things that are sparks that are in you, but there's there's a certain um, 
there's a certain hustle that is in everyone, right? I think there's a level of hustle that you can apply to work in a nine to five and be the best worker. But at some point you are going to tap out right. and you're going to level out in that position and you'll be the greatest ever at that. Um, but I think when you, it's people that feel that their value is high. I think it's to do with your personal value of yourself. Mm -hmm. Like I think that the people that settle don't see themselves. I don't want to say they don't value themselves, but they don't see the vision of them in a higher position. Mm -hmm. Like they're like, it's either way too much work or I don't have enough time. Mm -hmm. They roadblock themselves. That That's what it is. Some people put up roadblocks mm -hmm. for themselves. I think that's where, that's why they don't achieve anything because yeah. they've ro they roadblock themselves. And where that comes from is all of those other things that they've gone through, whether it be their environment, parenting, all of that stuff. Yeah. But I think every single time is self-sabotage, 100% mm -hmm. of the time. So that being said, you know, and talking about passions and, and why some people don't have that drive, what's something that's fueled you? Like what's something that just, was it, you know, anger at a young age? Was, was it, <laughs> what's something that's fueled you? Was it people telling you no? What, what was it? Um, I mean, I think what fueled me, and it chops and changes yeah. over time. Yeah. I think in the early years, it was um, an untrust of dreams. I won't get too deep into the whole no, scenario. Get, get deep. <laughs> get deep. But, get deep. All right, let me, We've uh, got another three hours. Okay. So get, get deep. <laughs> um, no, I think it came from like being given a false hope of something, right? Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. And then like, so when I first moved to America when I was a kid, right? Actually, let me go even further back. We're going deep now, right? Yeah, now we're this getting is nice. <laughs> Now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> so... Um, when I was a kid, I was, like I wasn't a school person. I never really like school's not my thing. Um, but I did okay. And I knew if I applied myself, I could do good. Right. Sure. So one day, uh, my stepdad, he says to me, like, if you do good on this math test, I'm going to give you a hundred, uh, pounds yeah. in, in London. I'm going to give yeah. you a hundred pounds. 126 us dollars. Yes, go, go ahead. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> Um, and this is back then. Like I'm like a hundred pounds. Yeah. I'm about to revise. Yeah, like money was a good motivation that's, that's for me. That's bricks. Then. Yeah. Yeah. I'm all about it. So I'm like, I'm probably like 12 years old yeah. at this point. And, um, so I go, I study, crush the test. hundred percent, hundred percent. Come home. I'm excited. I'm like, Hey, look, hundred percent on that test. He's like, all right, wait there. Let me go. Let me go get your money. Goes into like a cabinet. Comes back. He's like, here you go. And he gives me a hundred pounds of Monopoly money. Oof. Bruh. Oof. That's rough. <laughs> At 12 years old, yeah. I was like, that is never in life happening. Like, I remember yeah, it vividly yeah. to this day. Yeah. Like, I was so... He's like, I, I didn't say what type of money I was going to give yeah. you. And he just thought it was funny. But he his yeah. point was... I just wanted to prove to you yeah. that you could do good if you applied yourself, right. which in my mind, I already knew. I just didn't feel like I needed to prove it to sure. anyone. But the fact that somebody held a carrot in front of me and then was able to take it away. Totally. At 12 years old, I knew like I'm never listening to anybody that says they're going to hand yeah. me something ever again yeah and i'm just gonna make sure i make things happen for myself like, right if you told me today hey man i'm gonna do this and i'm gonna give you a hundred dollars i'll be like all right cool like yeah, if yeah. you come and give it to yeah. me cool but i would never sit around like going and doing the activities because i'm waiting on you to give me yeah. something ever again so that that type of things through various people through friends through business relationships that happened to me and I saw that kind of thing. So I was just like, I have to be successful enough to never rely on anyone promising me yeah. a portion of my own success. What a great blessing though. So in disguise oh, at 12 years old, totally, like what a great, totally, totally. And maybe in the back of his mind, you know, that was part maybe, of his plan, maybe, you maybe, know, maybe, but it was definitely like, no, but really it, fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. But it was like, it, it taught me a lot. It definitely, at that young age, but it was like that. And then what happens is though, is 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 after that now, like you are, 
to a certain point of success where like now you don't really need anyone to ever like hand you anything sure. and you're not yeah. expect you, you don't really want it yeah you've yeah. completely killed yeah. that idea to yourself yeah. like you've never you, you don't even think about that anymore so now you don't need it like what are you going to do mm -hmm. now like yeah. when, now, now you're like i'm here like oh no like nobody even if they offered me something now i would just say yeah. no yeah so now what's fueling me like now how do you get over that to keep driving and motivating yourself yeah and then you have to kind of dig into a whole new mindset and figure out a whole new way of of life basically yeah. to give yourself some more motivation but like I'll, I'll tell you mine but on you like did you have a moment like that like what what fueled you at the begin in the early stages so in the let's do the let's go backwards okay okay I think that I was recently what's fueled me is everybody's hate for network marketing. Okay. So mine is like, I want to actually. Oh, you're a network marketer. Right, right. Oh. You know what I mean? Like oh. everybody's like, ooh. Because <laughs> there's so many companies that just don't do it right. Yeah. And network marketing is based on people, which people will let you down. Yeah. Right? So yeah. the person on the beach going, you don't have to do anything, right? But they actually are working their ass off. Yeah. But the, what people see is the person on the beach going, just sign up and you're going to start making millions, right? And so yeah. it looks fake. Right, and and right, so right. it's all it's all like this facade of, of people that aren't really making it yet, you know, or haven't made it at all. And maybe they've got two other businesses that are actually paying them, but they're going, if you hop in this, because they want you to join, right? Yeah. So I'm here to prove that that's not the case, right? That you want to be so transparent. And it's something that I'm working on also, you know, like in my life and in a lot of my team's life as we talk about this where we're like, let's make sure that what, what it actually looks like is what it is. Mm -hmm. But on the front end of that question, yes, it is because of um, the naysayers that are like, you were doing this and this and this. Why did you do this? You know, and it's almost a little bit to prove people that it's possible because just like you, we both love the time freedom. So you said in the beginning of this podcast, you want to be able to have more time with your family, right? Yeah. And that's the same with me. Like what, since I've done this, I've been able to go see my family whenever I want, right? I've been able to travel whenever I want. And it doesn't have to be network marketing. And for those of you listening, find something that you love that you can make money with in the pockets of your time, right? Yep. In residual income. And that's that's you know, the basis of my message. So and that's what I'm today, super passionate currently, about. are you still what in the, in the fuel and motivation portion? Are you still a little bit in the, in the hush in the naysayer mode? Are you in, does, does that still live? I still, I very much so alive, <laughs> very much. So <laughs> very much so alive, um, is the person that's like, you know, they're not going to make it, you know, yeah. like they'll be back. They're going to do something like, you know, the nine to five or a salary or whatever. So, but, and then going back to in the beginning, and I like that you said when you were 12 years old, I mean, you know, kids are so impressionable. And so I don't, I don't forget when, you know, a basketball coach was like, you have so much potential, but you're doing this. Right. And I'm like, I don't know. I'm just this skinny little white kid. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> I'm not even supposed to be here. Um, and the, the, I always remember all those, you know, all those conversations. And if I really thought about it right now, it, it just popped in my head. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah, but um, I don't think that there was like a a defining at 20 years old. Somebody told me I couldn't do this and then I went and, you know, I don't think there was necessarily that. But it's always the fuel of the most recent person saying something. Yeah. Does that make sense? Have you have you had like so when I when I was going through when I had that mindset and, and, and sometimes that mindset, it, it weighs on you heavy sometimes. Yeah. Like have you I used to have like moments when I would like think in my head like at that point that's when i'm gonna have like crushed them yeah um and i'm gonna do x y and z yeah. like you have like a goal set of when you've crushed the nation yeah you have it played out you have it played out like you play it out yeah. in your mind right yeah. like like what does that look like for you like what what not that you would ever do it because I've never done totally, it. Because totally, by the time you get there, totally. you're like, I don't exactly. Even, I don't care anymore. That stuff doesn't matter. It doesn't even matter, right? I, but like, I've <laughs> had people go, "Oh, you're gonna join Chris's puppet show." I yeah. remember somebody said that. Or you, oh, you're gonna join his circus. Or oh, he's just using you, right? He wants you in his downline and stuff like that. Yeah. And like, yeah, the play out, right? And I won't go into it, but <laughs> I always want to stay humble, though, Roy, and yeah. I mean that. No, no, I, but this, this is an imaginary play out because we said you're never going to do it. Tell me what is going on. Like, well, I, well, nothing speaks louder than than money. Yeah. It doesn't, yeah, you know? Yeah. And if you're impacting people's lives and you're, you're sorry, social media is that way. And no matter what people say, 
you know, if you can see people traveling and you can see them actually making crazy money, you yeah. know, or great money, whatever exactly. that is, then that speaks more volumes than than, you know, the old school, like, check out this check. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, this is what I made last week. Like, that nobody... No uh, one cares no. about that No, but just you enjoying life is the best. Yeah. You enjoying and it's probably, life is it's the best. it's probably a greater feeling, too, when it's actually, like you said, you're humble in it. Chris is super humble in it. He's like... But he's helping make hundreds of people... How many people would you say is in your, your sphere of what you're doing now? About 2,000. Okay, 2,000. Yeah. He's helping make 2,000 people money, right? And, and a If lot they of, choose that, right. If, if they choose right. that, if they listen right. and do whatever yep. um, your instructions are. But I, I'm saying in those, in those naysayers' mind, imagine the people that are here locally. It's not even crisp showing off or doing anything but imagine people that are around him are living a successful life and like, that's it that's it that's like, the point like look i'm like yeah. i don't even need correct i am happy because that person that's is successful. the point like that person's making money that person just took a vacation and yeah we're doing the same business that business that you said is trash yeah they, they, we're working together on doing yeah. that. And that's the big win. Right, that, that's the big win. That's the revenge, if exactly. you will. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that, and, and just to go back to my first podcast, Lonnie Poor at the end, he said, when you become successful, you should look to your left, look to your right. And if there's no one around, you're not successful. 100%. So, yeah. so people, and a lot of the times, the naysayers are those solo successful mm -hmm. people that don't know how yeah. to help each other and they're mad in their own success. So they're like, you're not going to do that because you, you, you can't help all those people. Why would you help all those people? Uh -huh. Why would you? You know, th those are those people who don't know how to give. Mm -hmm. you it doesn't know? make sense to them. It doesn't make, it doesn't it, make any it, sense. That's them. why, yeah, it's a, it's a baffling thing yeah. to see you. You're winning by helping other people. Mm -hmm. like, And that's how sometimes in real estate that is like, because I want that person, like, why are you working with that person? Because I want to see that person go from a $150,000 condo into a $1.5 million house. Right. I want to see that journey. Right. Like, to me, that's exciting. That's the impact. Yeah, you know, that's the impact. Yeah. Like, I'm, I, as I've grown in business, like, I'm not going to stop working mm -hmm. with my database that I've pulled up and that we've grown in this seven years together. I'm not, I yeah. would never say, hey, transfer this over here. Like, that, that you, we did this together. Yeah. And now we're, we're pulling everyone into this new whole luxury market who maybe even that person didn't even believe they would ever be able to afford that house yeah. they didn't even believe they would ever even own a house before and now they're like oh they already helped me get yeah. from this that this that and now we're at this point so i think definitely biggest win is helping other people win mm -hmm. i think that to me is like amazing but you cannot strangle yourself in doing it yeah um at the same time and is that for you like so do you ever get to the point where you're overwhelmed with the amount of people you're trying to help or is it always you've had that balance and you know how to kind of you know like uh, uh how how do you facilitate like you said there's such a big team two thousand people yeah. how are you able to even facilitate that you you help the people that have their hand up okay so that's the beautiful thing in our business is you're not talking people into so sometimes you see it before they see it right sometimes you know like where they need to go before they even see it. And so you have to be at one, one step in front of them. Um, but you really don't push. You just run alongside and uh, you walk with the people that want to walk and you sprint with the people that want to sprint, right? Everybody's, everybody's, everybody's what they need, like their needs are different, right? So, you know, some of my friends might think that, hey, like, a, like 300 bucks a week, right? $1,200 a month would really help our family. But which, by the way, the average divorce or the divorce rate would go up by 50% by half with the average household having another 350 or $400 a month at the end of the month. That's it. Wow. Yeah. And you can Google that. Everybody Google that. Um, so, so that being said, imagine what an extra thousand dollars a week, you know, or $600 a week, you know, Wait, are you saying the divorce rate would go down or go up, go down, It'd go Did, down? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did I say okay. up? I think you said up. Okay. Yeah. yeah the divorce, rate, the divorce rate would go down yeah. by almost 50%. Because they say the number one reason people get divorced is because of financial. Correct. But stress. I, before I heard that and I saw that I actually looked this up on a bunch of different, you know, areas 
And before I heard that, I thought it was like, you know, 1500, right? Somebody would need $1,500, like $1,500 would change somebody's right. marriage. And I, I'm like, yeah, that makes sense to me. But 400 bucks, like 350. Yeah. That's so low. It's crazy. Right? At not a week, a month, 350 at the end of the month. If you had just a little bit more, 50% divorce rate would go down. Wow. Yeah. Which is crazy. But so um, to, to help divorce rates in America, <laughs> what would me and Chris have done? There's our news. Yeah. <laughs> so if you want to no, know, so we actually, um, not, not to help divorce rates, but in business and, and doing this, as, as we said, we like to help people. We like to push and garner these um, tight knit, positive mindset relationships. So we've set up a group mm -hmm. um, to kind of be the incubator for this. Um, and you have to basically, the criteria is you have to earn six figures plus, have a positive mindset and be willing to share. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to put a link in the bio um, for everybody who wants to be a part of this group. Yep. Um, we're going to meet at once a month and we're just basically literally going to have these types of discussions where we're going to be completely open, share our ideas um, and tell everything of of every step that we've gone through in our careers, how we get there and then have people obviously in the group that's set even seven figure income earners. Mm -hmm. They're willing to share and help you grow um, to earn in seven incomes as well. So that is what our kind of mission is. I, I would say outside of even our business, my yeah. real estate, yeah. um, in your health and wellness industry is that we just want to keep on continuing to have, the five best people around us if we yep. talk about it on a micro level because that is going to be exactly you know our average so we just are always trying to push that bar up mm -hmm. um and have those tight great um successful relationships around us and it's not just about money it's just that we know the grind somebody's gone through to get to six figures at that point in their career so yep. i want everyone to come out join us if you can be a part of that group um, but you, as I said, you may see Chris um, doing some more podcasting here coming up soon. And he would definitely be a regular um, on my show. Like and subscribe to the podcast. But I want to thank you. Thanks, brother. Uh, for coming out. Thanks for having me on. Me. That was thank fun. You. <laughs>